Magenta Canada and CNM Seeds present the Wheat School on RealAgriculture.com. Pete, a lot of guys this year are noticing right away that we've got a huge armyworm problem in our wheat. Why is why are armyworms such a problem this year? An excellent question, Sean. Armyworm are really cyclical and we had a big outbreak of them five years ago, and then the last four years, they, they kind of, they're always a problem somewhere in the province, and I can find armyworm almost always in every wheat field in the province, but they're just at low levels, and I really think it has to do with how they cycle with the natural parasites that do affect them. The other part of it, of course, is that we get armyworm as part of free trade from the U.S. They come up here on the, on the uh, trade winds in the jet stream, And so it depends a little bit on what happens to the south of the border, how many armyworm moths actually are available to come up and cause a problem here in Ontario. And and how do they cause their damage? So they lay their eggs. It's a really interesting kind of story because the moth itself is way up at the top of thunderstorm cells or in the jet stream kind of moving. And so even from that height, they can look down and they can tell the greenness of the crop that is down underneath them. And so what often happens is if you have the earliest planted, best-looking wheat field in the entire area, you are the person that gets absolutely smoked with armyworm because that's the right color and all the moths tend to target there. When we get to have a lot of moths, then what happens is that they start laying eggs in any wheat field that's out there because there's just so many of them. Uh, they lay their eggs in the wheat field, the eggs hatch, and it's really the larva that caused the damage. So let's talk about control. How do, what is the threshold for control? Yeah, so the threshold for control is five larvae in a, uh, that are under one inch in length. And really, I want to talk also about catching them early because that is so critical. But the threshold is five larvae under one inch in length in a square foot. And just to put that in perspective, because a square foot is sometimes hard to measure, in, in uh, wheat fields here in Ontario that are on seven and a half inch rows, it takes 19 inches of row to be equal to one square foot. So if you're counting them in a row, it's kind of five larvae in 19 inches of row. If you're above that level, then you need to control them. Pete, so why is under an inch so important? So there's a couple of reasons why the size of the armyworm is really critical. If you go back five years ago, Sean, we did a lot of spraying for armyworm, and it was really revenge spraying. Uh, By the time we caught the problem, then most of the armyworm were already inch, inch and a quarter, inch and a half long, and growers felt like they had to spray. They went out there, they tramped through the crop, they spent the $20 an acre it cost to do it, and they got almost no yield increase whatsoever because the damage was already done. Once the larvae get to be an inch and a half long, they pupate. When they pupate, they're gone. Uh, The amount of leaf feeding they're going to do from inch, inch and a quarter up to that inch and a half stage is really quite minimal. And so if you don't get them early, the damage is already done. The other problem is if they're that big, they're really, really hard to kill. And so it just takes much, much more insecticide to get that larger larva. This year, what's really cool is that we caught them early, and that's quite rare with armyworm, but one of my best contacts was out scouting the other night. He called me up, and his comment was, the ground is alive with quarter-inch armyworm. And, you know, way over threshold, and they're little wee guys. Well, guess what? It takes a lot less insecticide to kill that little wee guy than it does to kill that great big guy, plus the fact that that little wee guy hasn't eaten any of the leaves. And so if we, if we get them when they're small, they haven't done the damage, we still have the leaf tissue there to photosynthesize and increase the yield versus spraying them when they're big and the damage is done and not getting any yield benefit. So really critical to get them when they're small. So Pete, talk a little bit about beneficials controlling the armyworm or that can kind of help the farmer out. Yeah, absolutely. So there's, there's beneficial insects. So actually it's a parasitic wasp and there's also fungal diseases that can can affect armyworm and quite intriguing and I think this is why they cycle is because when the beneficials the, these parasitic wasps are at high enough levels you can have a lot of armyworms but they they rapidly infect them what they do is they lay eggs right behind the head 
and then the egg hatches for the wasp and lives inside the armyworm and kills the armyworm. If you have a lot of those beneficials out there, they can take a quite high armyworm population and, and basically almost annihilate it in a reasonably short period of time. So it is important to look to see if, if you're seeing those parasites, look for those white eggs right behind the head when you're scouting for those armyworm. If you're seeing a lot of those parasitized armyworm, then you kind of take them out of the equation when you're trying to do that threshold number. How do we control them? Yeah, so there's a number of different insecticides that, that we can use. Uh, Matador, de, 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 oh, Matador, Desis, Lanate, 7XLR and Delegate are all registered uh, for controlling them, and they have different pre-harvest intervals. We really have to worry about pre-harvest intervals. In fact, right now, Matador's pre-harvest interval is 21, or pardon me, 28 days, and for a lot of wheat fields, we're now within 28 days of harvest, so we really have to shift onto some of the other products that have a 21-day uh, pre-harvest interval, and there's a couple of those that have a 14-day window if we, if we need to get that close. But mostly, as the crop gets more mature, they aren't going to do the same level of damage, and so we start to not need to control them. Okay, and, and, and we shouldn't be spraying, my understanding is we should not be trying to control them during the day. Nighttime is the time to be act, or taking care of the control? Yeah, absolutely. They feed at night, and most of these products that control them are contact products. If you spray in the daytime, man, that is just a 100% entire waste of money. It drives me nuts that, that people go out there and spray during the daytime. You spray in the evening, you spray at night, that's when they're up on the plant. And the other thing is that we really need good coverage. So what, you have to make sure that you use water volume. 20 gallons of water per acre is an absolute minimum. We also need to use the right nozzle. So something that gives us a medium to fine droplets, we have lots of growers who want to use air induction nozzles to prevent drift, and I think that's absolutely correct. We don't want drift of these products, but realistically, air induction nozzles, you have to be pretty careful to pick an air induction nozzle that actually gives you that medium to fine spray droplet, and if you're going to... Uh, use those those pro those tips make sure that you you do get that kind of good spray uh, droplet size the good pattern uniformity and the other thing you need to use is lots of pressure to drive it down into the canopy and actually get contact on those army worms so at night 20 gallons of water uh, good nozzles and lots of pressure i really like the twin jet nozzles they're they're at about a 30 degree angle uh, off the horizontal or pardon me, off the vertical rather, one is 30 degrees forward, one is 30 degrees back, so about a 60 degree split between the two, and they're kind of giving that coverage as you go through. That's different, I have to be careful now, that is different than the fusarium nozzles. Remember the fusarium nozzles, we don't want that 60 degree angle of separation, we actually want about a 150 degree angle of separation, so you can't use fusarium nozzles to spray for armyworm. Okay Pete, thanks a lot, we'll talk to you again soon. Yeah, not a problem.